Hey, what's up, nature freaks? What's going on? Dave and Jeremy here. Today we're going to be talking about the five best pet reptiles for beginners. So whether you're an adult starting out in the hobby or kids, maybe you're thinking about getting your first pet reptile, we're going to tell you all about what makes the best beginner pet. Heck yeah. Now, professionally, we work with animals every day, almost every day, you could say. So we go out and we take our pet reptiles and we do educational shows with them. Now, we do a lot of videos about us in the wild and the field, but constantly we are caring for, feeding, and um, training captive animals. So we want to share some of that experience with you and tell you what makes the best beginner in our opinion. Yep, so let's get right to it and bring out our first pet reptile. Let's get it! Nature in your face! Alright guys, here we have our first recommended pet reptile, the bearded dragon. This is Norelco. And this is Little Donk. Little Donk. Alright, the first thing I want to talk about is temperament. These lizards are not aggressive, they're not very defensive, so your likelihood of getting bit very, very low. You do not want to get your first pet reptile that's going to bite your finger. It's just going to discourage you, and uh, you're probably not going to want to continue buying reptiles or, or have one in the hobby if, right, you, if you're getting right. injured by them. And to speak to the uh, temperament really quick, mm -hmm. these came from a local pet store, so we literally just picked them up, brought them to the studio on loan, and they're super sweet and not having an issue, so they're ready to go to homes. Now, size. This is on the smaller to medium side. It's a juvenile. Um, they start off smaller, but they only get 12 Tiny to 24 age. inches. So you're talking about, you know, double this length max. So if you put them two together, that That's would be big. as big as uh, an adult would get. And it's mainly tail. So you're not going to get this Godzilla-sized lizard like a monitor. And, you know... You're just buying a tail with legs, basically. <laughs> That's about it, right? <laughs> Very easy to feed, which is great because um, they are omnivorous, which means they eat meat and I'm they eat, omnivorous. Right? They eat veggies and they eat meat. So you're gonna be you're gonna be giving them a lot of crickets and mealworms. Um, and if you run out of those, pretty easy. You just pull open the refrigerator, chop up some leafy greens, maybe some carrots. Yeah. And uh, so it's pretty all easy. All food that's readily available at the pet store. You can even have this stuff mailed to your house now. Right. All right, so what about maintenance? Uh, overall care. Pretty simple. When you right. say Yeah, I mean we got oh well, food is part of that, so easy to feed, easy to set up. All reptiles are going to need heat, so a basking lamp for these guys, and then they do require a special light, the UVB, to simulate the sun, but um, pretty simple setup for these guys if you do um, some of your research there. And then, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to say this is like a good thing. They don't live that long. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, 15 to like 20 a cat, years. Like a house cat, 15 to 20, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a rewarding animal that you can put some time into and really get some years out of, so I think that's that's cool. So right. there so, you go. Yeah, and we should move on to number two. Number two. All right, guys. So uh, our second recommended pet reptile happens to be another lizard, another awesome pet reptile, the leopard gecko. This is Mellow Yellow. And this is Ghostface Killer. <laughs> Ghostface <laughs> Killer. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about temperament with the leopard gecko, another super sweet animal. Obviously, you can see they're just they're just adorable. They're adorable looking mm -hmm. um, and easy to handle. They don't bite. Um, and you know what's really cool? I love the way they feel. They're almost like velvet. They're very yes. soft, just gentle animals altogether. Yeah, so they're as spiky as the bearded dragons can be. Um, and they got these little bumps all over them uh, and yeah they're very soft yeah so they're, they're really they're great to handle lizards um now what is hilarious i want to throw out a little warning though when they're babies if you startle <laughs> them they will scream at you i mean they're like <laughs> so you know don't funny. let that throw you off it's kind of just hilarious but um yeah super easy to handle and as far as size these are both adult females so if you see right. that compared to our hands, uh, 8 to 10 inches on average. So there are some that get bigger than this, but these are adult females that have laid eggs. So they're they're done growing. Right. So compared to that bearded dragon that gets a little bit bigger at, uh, you know, foot and a half, two feet, mm -hmm. this might be the best way to go if you're not looking for something bigger. Because obviously, the bigger the animal, the bigger the enclosure, this guy's going to require a lot less room. Of course, you want to give any reptile room. You want it to be able to, to, you know, to have a nice habitat to roam around in. But again, it's up to you, personal opinion. Do you want a big lizard? Do you want a smaller lizard? If you want a smaller one, this is definitely hundred percent, hundred percent. As far as food goes, these are not omnivores. They are strict insectivores. I mean, mostly mealworms. Yeah, is what people um, will feed them. 
but I would recommend a variety of insect um, feeders. So you can do crickets, you can do the mealworms, even small superworms, all kind of stuff out there for them. But that's all they're going to eat, and they only eat a couple times a week, even as yeah. adults. So it's not as much food as you would on that bearded dragon. Hey, one of the reasons I like giving them crickets is it because it forces the gecko to kind of move around. It's just a little bit of exercise. So yeah, and it's kind of neat definitely. to watch them. You know, when you put a cricket in, it's just watch them. They stalk them. They run around. They grab them. So that's something kind of cool when you're getting those bugs to eat. All right, so lifespan. Yeah. Similar to the bearded dragon. These guys can live more than 10 years, 8 to 10, sometimes up to 20 years. So mm -hmm. it is a long-term commitment. So you got to think about that as well. But... You know, you're not going to be able to buy any reptile that's going to die in a couple of months if you're looking for something short term. I don't know why you would. Right, yeah. There aren't, there aren't throwaway pets. That's what we're getting to. Um, and, it's, and, you know, just like a cat, you know, they can <laughs> hang out and chill and be a part of your life for a long time, which is really cool. And finally, uh, setup and maintenance. Um, super simple. Compared to the bearded dragon, the bearded dragon, they like to climb. They get big, like Dave said, so they're going to require more room. These guys can have a small, a much smaller enclosure and be happy with that. Uh, they're going to be more active at night. So if you give them hides, they're going to hide in there during the day. And when you come home from work or school, they're ready to party. <laughs> and if you don't want to have a bright heat lamp that stays on, you can provide them with just a heat pad mm -hmm. uh, like we talked about with the bearded dragon. There it goes yawning. and look, did you see that? Look at that. La, 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 la. What is he doing there? That was weird. Yeah, maybe they're just... Uh, we're keeping them up because it's daytime. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, so that's it for the lizard portion of our best pet reptiles. Uh, what do you want to do? Maybe we'll do snakes. Snakes. All right, let's talk about uh, the best pet snakes for beginners. That's coming up next. All right, so for our number one pet snake, we're going to go with the corn snake. All right, these guys are incredible pets, and we're going to tell you why. This is Olaf. And I haven't named this one, but when I come up with a name, it will be amazing. <laughs> so as far as temperament goes, super handleable snakes. Whether you get one as a baby or even if you adopt it as an adult, they are just very, very calm snakes. And they're not very likely to bite. Even in their enclosure when they're being fed, they're just really relaxed snakes. And of course, they're non-venomous. <laughs> You're not going to get a venomous snake as a so. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't quite, if, let's talk about size. Um, they do get fairly large. These snakes can reach about four and a half to five feet, depending on if you get a male or a female. So it's a pretty big snake. But if you compare that to a python or a boa, not, not very big and definitely manageable, even for a kid. Right, and this is an adult male here, and then we have an adult female here. So you can see the size difference. I mean, this is, this is basically it. So not too big, very handleable for any um, age person. Now, as far as food, snakes are super simple. And this is where some people might get a little hairy, a little sketchy, mm -hmm. because they do eat rodents. Yeah. Okay, but you can go to any pet store and you can get mice or rats, and that's what they eat. Now, here's the plus. Uh, if you're shy about live feeding, we yep. do not feed any of our animals live food. You can buy them frozen, and you can get them pre-killed at the pet store. Now, as far as lifespan, um, we're kind of sticking with the same age range here. You know, you're looking at animals that can easily live 15, 20. These guys could go a little bit longer than 20. You could easily get 25 years out of them, but still within that same um, range of roughly 15, 20 years. Yeah, something we forgot to mention is look at the colors of these snakes. There's probably a thousand different color morphs mm -hmm. for corn snakes we so yes. you know you can you can kind of pick out which which color you think is best for you and uh it's pretty pretty neat <laughs> to see all the different patterns and colors that they're producing on uh or, or with yeah the corn, corn snakes are highly variable when it comes to their patterns and their colors and and just from like locality to genetics they're amazing pet snakes they really are um maintenance and setup um you can get as simple as you want. Now we recommend always with reptiles that they have a place to hide. Yep. So, Especially snakes. And that's where sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are people who keep snakes in drawers, like breeders, or if you just have a lot of snakes. But even still, they need places to hide, to feel safe, and to move around and kind of venture through, you know. Um, they need that exercise during the day for their stimuli. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you do give them places to hide, and they need a hot and a cool spot which could be provided with something as simple as a heat pad or, I mean, in the wild, they sit under the sun. Yep. So a basking light 
your snake will use a basking light despite what you might think. Yeah, so again, guys, if you're going to get snake, corn snakes, the way to go. However, if you want to get a little bit more advanced, our next pet reptile that we recommend is going to be a species of python that doesn't grow very large. So okay. we're going to put these up and we're going to bring out our fourth best pet reptile for beginners. All right, so number two on our snake list, you got the corn snake, which is amazing, but maybe you want to have the title of I own a python right here. One of the most um, chill pythons you can get is the ball python. Literally, they ball up and they just hang out with you. Now that's more of a defensive pose in the wild, but they'll just sit there while you're playing Xbox and <laughs> gaming all day on your PC and they'll just chill with you. So the temperament is unmatched uh, when it comes to any other python or boa. Yep, now this is Wilson. <laughs> and this is Spalding. And this, there you go. This is a male ball python. And, you know, when you hear the word python, sometimes you get a little freaked out because people think about these giant constrictors like the reticulated pythons and the Burmese pythons, which are also readily available in the pet trade. These things do not get even close to that size. If you had a four-foot ball python, yeah. that is a really good size. They're a little bit thick, thicker than those corn snakes, but they're not going to get unmanageable in terms Ooh. of length and weight. Yeah, so now we're going to go back to food. And this is kind of redundant with the corn snake. They're rodent eaters. Um, the only difference there is at this size, they're gonna require a bigger rodent. So you're gonna be going into strictly rats and bigger rodents, but no more difficult to get than the uh, rodents you'd get for the corn snakes. So now, readily available. As we mentioned with the corn snakes, even more so, I think ball pythons, there's probably more color and pattern morphs than any other snake in the pet trade. Mm -hmm. This is what a wild ball python would look like. Personally, I kind of like the normal colors. I don't kind of get into all that stuff. But if you're a fan of beautiful. piebald or albino or hats and this and that, well, you have a lot of snakes to choose from. If yeah, that's 100%. And the lifespan, uh, once again, is similar to the, that of the corn snake. So you're looking at a snake that could live 20 plus years. Yep. Um, so we're kind of staying in that same you know, lifespan range that we have this whole time. And as far as maintenance, once again, like the corn snake. The only difference I'll say is the corn snake is more active in mm -hmm. the enclosure. Yep. So if you did provide it with vertical, um, being a rat in the rat snake family, they're gonna climb as high as you give them and they're gonna yeah. use that. The ball pythons- are terrestrial. They are mainly terrestrial. If you gave them um, some sticks to climb on, they will move around, but they're not gonna get super high up in there. And once again, a heat pad would be fine for them. Yep, yeah. so easy maintenance, easy food, beautiful super cool pythons that stay small and last but not least number five let's, let's, let's keep see what it that a surprise is. okay okay guys last but not least let's talk about the best pet tortoise for beginners the russian tortoise yes definitely this is vladimir and this is natasha so we got the uh russian tortoises now i mean i would venture to say not just tortoise but the best pet turtle um these guys are great temperament they are not likely to bite at all and once they get used to you they're not shy like like this guy here yeah they're he, actually he's feeling social. pretty shy there yeah they're very very social and when you approach their enclosure i mean they'll come right to you they're just looking for food like hey what's going on kind of like a little puppy inside of a shell so that's super cool and they are very friendly and, and this is easily um a handleable animal yeah, they're not going to get Galapagos tortoise size. You're not going to have a little Volkswagen <laughs> running around a family room. I like the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you compare it to a very common tortoise in the pet trade, the Salgado tortoise, I mean, they get right. That's huge, a giant, like a giant yeah. boulder. So these guys, females, a little bit bigger than the males. They'll get five to ten inches. Male's a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So you can see the difference between this female and this male. Although this guy's not done growing. He'll get a little bit bigger than that. But you right. can see the difference. But yeah, but this is as big as you're going to be working with here. So a kid could easily pick this up and maneuver it around. And it's cool just to let them walk around the house and do their thing. You can put them outside, let them roam in the grass. So uh, just really cool animals to interact with. So be. food, uh, they're vegetarians. So you only have to be dealing with plants. You do not need any bugs with the Russian tortoise. So that is a plus with a lot of people. Just a variety of food. And what's cool is if you put them outside, if you set them up outside in a protected enclosure, they can feed off the dandelion greens, they'll eat the grass, so um, the clover, as long as there's no pesticides out there, uh, they're easy to keep outside during the summer. 
All right, now. <laughs> yeah, this could be the negative. The negative. We talked about near the 10 to 20 year lifespan of some of the snakes and the lizards that we highlighted. These guys can live up to 50 years. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> I mean, I would even say a minimum of 30, which is that's still almost double the other right. ones. So you're going to go from a teenager to a grandma or a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> if you end up taking care of it and keeping it its whole life. 30 right. to 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so maintenance. Maintenance. So last but not least, the maintenance and the setup. Um, you could set them up a variety of ways mm -hmm. and that's what's cool like i said you could do an outdoor enclosure you could do an indoor enclosure you could build a box for them um aquariums are kind of on the not the best side if they can see through the glass but um <laughs> yeah the rocks to climb on a lot of places to hide you're definitely going to need though your basking lamp and a uv light so on the lights like the bearded dragon um, a little more requirements there as far as the special lighting yeah and he, and he mentioned you can keep them outside. What he meant was in the warmer months. You do have to bring right. them indoors. They're just not snow tortoises. That right. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to go out there with the little, you know, ski cap on it. <laughs> All right, guys, to summarize our five best pet reptiles for beginners. We learned about the bearded dragons. We learned about the leopard geckos. We learned about the corn snakes. We learned about the ball pythons. And we learned about the Russian tortoises. So next time you are thinking about going out and getting a pet, any of those five pets, like we said, wonderful for beginners, for kids, for adults, anybody just starting out in the hobby. Yeah, hit us in the comments if you already have these, or maybe you have a recommendation for another beginner. So we will see you later, and we're going to go celebrate. <laughs> see ya.